Thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, so I assume everybody is using LLMs, right? More or less. Um, who is monitoring their LLMs, actually? Yeah, that's the typical picture where you don't see so many people actually looking at what is happening behind the scenes. Let's change that and see what our LLMs are actually up to and what we can look into in general. So I'm Philip. I work for Elastic, the company behind Elasticsearch. We have a lot of use cases around LLMs, both as a user and in production. I'll show you in a moment. Um, I run our DevRel team, so I speak a lot about the great things that you can do with LLMs nowadays. Um, so as a company, we are both a user and a consumer or observer of LLMs. So Elasticsearch is the most widely used vector database um, and the most deployed one. Um, so we use a lot of the LLM power to make that work. But at the same time, we have an observability solution. So we can also keep an, a view on what is happening there. And to tie both of those together, we have an AI assistant, which can actually use LLMs to then go through the data that you have collected and which you could ask questions. So that is the, the world that we have set up here and how we combine these different things together. Um, on a, on a general overview, there are two levels in which you can or on which you can monitor your LLMs. There is the high level one, you use an LLM provider and that normally provides uh, an API based logs and metrics that you can ingest and then see what is happening on that level. And on a kind of like a more in-depth level, if you instrument your application, nowadays pretty much everybody uses OpenTelemetry for that and that is what is very widely used and standardized on. You can use those uh, traces normally that you would extract if you do open tracing or open telemetry uh, tracing. You can extract that information and then see what are people throwing at your application, how long does it take, where do errors happen, what do you get back. So you get the full picture of how your LLMs are behaving and what is happening behind the scenes. So let's take a quick look behind the scenes of how those work or look like. For Azure OpenAI, the key metrics and logs that are exposed and that you want to take a look at is, um, the first one is the most obvious one. You have an error count. So you see how many prompts generate an error and how many are successful. Normally that number should be low. You will see in my example, we don't always consistently get errors. Uh, so it's a bit harder to show, but you should still track those and keep an eye on them. The second thing is prompt input and the completion text that you get out of it. This is more a log-based approach where you keep track of like, what are people sending to your LLM and what are they getting back and how do they work? Especially if something goes wrong, you want to have a good idea of how thing or how people have been interacting with them. Response latency for anybody who is not as patient as we used to be. It's actually funny for us uh, from a data store perspective in the past, we were very picky about latency and people were complaining if something took more than 100 milliseconds. Now with LLMs, people are a bit more forgiving. Like if the LLM takes 500 milliseconds, people are often still like, okay, that's still fine because it's new and exciting, but you still want to keep an eye on that and people might not always be as patient about those as we are today. Um, token usage is especially useful for keeping track of how much do you consume and then how much will it cost you? Because that is the big question many businesses ask, like if I deploy an LLM today in my application, what will the additional cost be that I will incur from all the tokens that are both the input and the output tokens that you have? And finally, content filtering. Also, if you've been here for the previous talk, which dove a bit deeper into content filtering, there are different categories uh, of harmful content, how to produce weapons, uh, sexual content, um, harmful content, all of those can be moderated by the LLMs, but you might still want to track how your users are interacting with that and how the, the stats are going on that. So we'll take a look at all of those. To set this up, um, you need API management in Azure um, to actually extract those um, stats uh, to Maybe I don't want to go too deep into the, the configuration since we only have very limited time. Um, but in our documentation, and I'll prop the link into the, the slides at the very end, um, you have the, the, the integration service or the, the source from the API where you can pull the stats. Um, from the diagnostic settings, you pull them into Event Hub and then Elastic can pull them out of Event Hub and show you various dashboards and integrations on top of them. 
So this is for sure OpenAI, how to actually get the data and combine those together. Um, we have the full documentation with all the different things from billing metrics uh, to Azure logs to Azure OpenAI. Uh, all of those can be pulled here to get a general overview of how it's going. Okay, once you have set this up, um, you can also set up content filtering. Um, here we have medium and high settings for violence, hate, sexual content, and self-harm um, that we all want to block and then be able to monitor. So all of those for the LLM have been configured and you can then just roll them out. Uh, so let's take a quick look at what the actual output looks like when we have done that. So I have picked here um, the response time, which is actually very good. I've broken it down by the different models. So you can see we are using here for our Azure uh, OpenAI uh, data set. Um, I'm looking at GPT-4, GPT-4.0, and GPT-4.32K. And you can see what the average response time is, um, or the time to first response uh, for all of the different models. And except for that one spike here where we went up to 184 milliseconds, it's actually been pretty good. So nobody should complain anymore um, that the latency is actually super high because for most of them here, the, the first response was very low down to like 10 milliseconds or uh, 22 milliseconds with GPT-4.0 here. Um, I'm showing you here the last 24 hours. You could zoom in and say like, oh, I want to only see the last, uh, sorry, that was the last 30 days. Now it's the last 24 hours. Um, and you can just see how the latency breakdown over that period went. Um, and you can just get a bit, bit of a feeling what, like how fast the Azure LLM uh, is responding to you. Uh, to give you an overview of a, a bit of a broader data set, here we have um, request rates, error rates, token usage, and chat completion latency, all combined into a single dashboard for the data that we have uh, ingested. So you can see we have just 282 requests here. This was a pretty slow internal service that we've been using. Um, total tokens were still 6.745 million. Um, so if you know the cost per token, you get an idea of what this will actually cost you at the end of the day. Um, total errors were zero in the last 24 hours, which is good, maybe not good for the demo, but we can switch to a longer time frame to see how that goes. And then we can see which models were most popular. GPT-4.0 was the one uh, that was doing almost all the requests. And then you can see um, the request rate over time, no errors, uh, token usage, uh, chat completion models over time, and an actual log of all the individual items. So you can see um, which model we were using uh, and which deployment name we were targeting, um, and if it was OpenAI or Azure OpenAI and what we have collected in here. Um, to make this slightly more visible, let's pick the last 30 days um, for the error rate, because now finally we have some errors, or we had some errors a bit further uh, or longer ago. So um, we had some 400 errors um, like a few weeks ago, uh, and we had 26 here. So this will help you to debug how your LLMs are behaving and how uh, the interaction is going with them. So this gives you a good insight of how everything is behaving here. Um, if you want to get the overview of like how um, the content filtering is going, so the low level response that you would get, here my example is how to kill a mockingbird. And uh, the responses that you get is, it wasn't filtered out for hate, not for jailbreak, not for self-harm, not for sexual content, but for violence, this one reached a medium severity. Um, and was actually blocked and filtered out. Maybe this is what you want, maybe this is not what you want, but only with those right sets you can actually keep an overview of what has been filtered out by your models and how to handle that with your end users, or if you would want to allow such content in your use case. Um, so here is an example of what it would look like, the, the filter des dashboard, um, where most of them were filtered out for violence, and then you can also see um, how the severity distribution is of what was filtered out, that if you want to dive into that and tune your filters to actually get a, a, a more strict or a less strict filtering of those results. But that will really help you to get that overview. Um, also, 
in terms of total cost, it could tell you then, this is another example of one of our internal deployments where we can see how much money did we actually spend on all of this? Um, and how did the distribution work out over time? Uh, that was one of our European clusters because this is actually in Euro. Um, and you can see which models cost you how much money. And again, the, the distribution over time in terms of daily usage and the breakdown by model of where you spend your money. But this will make it really easy to figure out what is this costing you? Because that's probably the number one question your managers will ask you um, at some point. What is your uh, LLM strategy costing the company in terms of money here? Um, I don't want to dive into that too much, but tracing is then the other side. Everything I've shown you so far was more on the logs and metrics side, what we got from the Azure uh, Event Hub or what we could pull out of those APIs. If you instrument your application either with plain vanilla open telemetry or we have our own distribution which is tuned more for the uh, elastic setup or stack this is what you could see like we have this entire request here we have an a, a request against an api chat uh, and you can see most of the time was actually spent down here in that red bar where we where this is the the chat completion that we were going for um, so in all the different things, you can see how many milliseconds each one request took. So for example, the search took uh, 37 milliseconds and then you had another search. But what really cost you the most time here was the GPT-40 total request, not just the first byte, but the total request, um, which took more than two seconds. So if you look at your services, you can then get an overview of like, where do you actually spend your time to get your responses and how to make that potentially better. Or also if you switch out the model, how will the latency change? How will the cost change? You can annotate all of those to get a better overview. If you annotate the cost, for example, in terms of tokens or money on the request, you could say down to the specific request in tracing what did this query cost or what does this request cost me in terms of LLM and other time and overhead. So you get a, a much deeper overview of how to dive into all of those. Um, if you want to learn more about all of these, because we're almost out of time, here are a couple of resources of blog posts where we describe step by step how you configure and connect all of these pieces uh, and how to get the most value out of your LLMs and make sure they're safely deployed to production and won't break the bank. And that will help you to get the most out of that. Before you run off, we'll have a networking event at the Elastic booth afterwards. Um, if you have questions, we can do them there. I'll be around. Uh, my colleagues will also be there to either demo a bit more of what I've teased here um, or to cover anything vector search related, LLM based, AI assistance, all of the things that we provide uh, to make your AI journey a bit better. And that's it from us, um, Elastic, the AI search company, uh, because we cover everything around LLMs for you.